Well, hello. Today I want to speak about something very serious in the body of Christ among Christians. And I specifically want to speak to women because of a false teaching that is very prevalent and that is going around and deceiving many, many women. And it has been doing so for a very, very long time. And that is the teaching of the bride. And this is a very seductive um, teaching. And it takes captive not only the woman, but the whole household. So please, if you are somebody who um, is involved in this, do not cover your ears today. Listen to a sister in Christ who is going to warn you because I understand how this deception works. Now, I am going to first just speak about it in case you only want the gist of it um, and not want to go through a whole Bible study. Uh, this teaching regarding the bride says that we are the bride and like Esther, we need to be go through a process of cleansing and um, we need to be... Um, without spot or wrinkle before the Lord, which things are all true. But how this teaching then works is it, it firstly helps women to overcome um, many problems they may have had, things that, that uh, have hurt them. And it's especially um, married women that have um, been hurt in their marriages or it often... Uh, it will help a woman uh, with traumatic experiences she had in childhood. So it, at first it helps you, but then what it does is it slowly takes you away from faith in Christ alone and takes you back to Hebrew roots and takes you into works. And ever so slowly, you and the whole family start... Um, keeping the law it may be first it may be just be something like um keeping the sabbath or even just um starting you on praying with a prayer shawl and it works ever so slowly it is a seductive bewitching spirit um and it tells you you are beautiful a bride of Christ and that the Lord loves you but it doesn't say that you are married it says you are a bride and you are waiting you see so already there is a big problem because in Christianity we are already married to Jesus Christ it says uh, the um, in Revelation I will show you the bride the wife of the lamb so the bride is not unmarried we are already married to jesus christ when jesus came and when the old system of what we know today as judaism when that um, ended we were married to jesus christ in christianity and christianity is the wife of the lamb so there's already a trouble if they're telling you you must be a bride, you see. And so what happens is you are stolen um, and you are put back under the law because Paul explained in order to marry, we had to die to the law and then be married to another, which is Christ. But now these false prophets come and then they teach women this teaching and then the women start to teach this to the other woman and then slowly but surely they marry you again to the law but now since you are christian and married to jesus christ you now become an adulterer you see but their aim is that you eventually deny jesus christ and be married only to that law system. So that means you are um, 
again, you are marrying the uh, basically you become Hagar because Paul explained that Sarah, the Ju Jerusalem above, is our mother. That is um, the same as the as the wife of the Lamb. You see, it was only when Jesus came when the church was a bride waiting to be married because John the Baptist said he is not the bridegroom. He came to baptize for repentance and made the way for Jesus Christ. So then the, the church, the fledgling church was a bride. But when Jesus came and washed the church with the water of the word and poured out the Holy Spirit and Christianity was started. Then the church became the wife who has many children for Jesus. But when they take you back under the law, then you are not like Sarah, who is a symbol of the new Jerusalem and who brings forth children who are free, but then you become like Hagar, who is under bondage, the bondage of the law. And that is also called Egypt because Hagar was Egypt the, and the slavery of sin. So you are taken back and then that is worshipping the queen of heaven which the whole family does because the whole family is taken captive via the women who return to the law. The same is with Islam. It is you you are put back and you can see it um you end up with something covering you, covering your head, covering your face, you see, because when you are a bride, the veil is lifted and you are married. So when the um, when Jesus Christ was crucified, we know that that curtain was rent. That represents the veil that was rent. That represents that we could enter behind the veil. But when we allow these false prophets to put a veil on us again, to dress us as a bride again and, and put a veil again over our face. Because the Bible says Moses' face was covered with a veil. Then we are becoming a, a bride, but not a bride of Christ. We are becoming um, this other bride who is the queen of heaven which is the bride, not of Christ. And so obviously is the bride of those that oppose Christ, the Antichrist. And this is very serious, ladies. You must let Jesus um, heal your wounds and you must not turn back to old ways. Don't go backwards. Remember Lot's wife when she turned backwards. You must go ahead and go forward and remain in your Christianity whereby Jesus is all able to heal all your wounds. Be very careful when you are seduced by these type of groups that make you keep Jewish customs, make you light a candle it's very seductive because in the Jewish culture, the woman is also very honored and these practices are brought into Christianity and the story of Esther and they seduce us women very easily if we are, have hurt inner hurts. Avoid those practices. So let us look at the scriptures that show us this um, terrible, um, seductive doctrine that takes captive whole households and puts them back under the law ever so slowly by firstly um, seducing the woman back into Jewish customs via the Hebrew roots. And then the aim is eventually to totally return back 
to the old covenant and the law keeping. So in Ezekiel 13, we read what the prophecies against the false and foolish prophets who um, say peace, peace, but there is no peace. And they build a wall and plaster it with untempered mortar. And the Lord says he is going to break down these lies. He's going to send great hailstones of truth to sh smash this shelter of lies. But today I want to focus on the women that they capture these false prophets. They capture the woman and then they capture the whole family. So let us read there in Ezekiel 13 from verse 17. It says there, Likewise, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own heart. Prophesy against them and say, Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the women who sew magic charms on their sleeves and make veils for the head, heads of people of every height to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people and keep yourself alive? And will you profane me among the my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, killing people who should not die and keeping people alive who shall not live by lying to my people who listen to lies? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls there like birds. I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go. The souls you hunt like birds. I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people from your hand and they shall no longer be prey in your hand. Then you shall know that I am the Lord because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and you have strengthened the hands of the wicked, so that he does not turn from his wicked way to say, save his life. Therefore you shall no longer envision futility, nor practice divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And this part gives us a promise that even those that are captured in the, this false teaching, this false teaching of the bride, the Hebrew roots bride, they are going to be released. Let's look at that picture. You see, it's, it's showing us this bride um, and all the birds that are flying away. Can you see that those birds are the spirit, the Holy Spirit? Now, this is typically the type of picture that these uh, this bride movement will show to women. It will be this woman in her bridal dress looking beautiful. But if you look carefully at these pictures, the woman is often quite scantily clad. Her, her Often her shoulders show her dress is not very uh, it's very revealing and then I often have seen the hair also of this woman is very wild just have a look it's not always but it's just something I show you and I chose this picture because it perfectly ir illustrates how it actually is the Holy Spirit flying away now the Lord says he will he will deliver his people, but in this picture, it's actually showing to become this bride. The Holy Spirit will leave you, and you will go back into works. Um, that is what it is showing, and it it says there that the woman so magic charms. That is because it it's what Paul said in Galatians three: Who has bewitched you? You see, you are put under bewitchment. And Galatians 3 and 4 is all about returning to the law, returning to the law keeping, rather than staying in the spirit. 
And then it says the, the women make veils for the head of the people. The reason it is veils is, is because they are um, going back under the law of Moses. So that is the being put back under the veil because Moses, um, it says he had a veil over his face and that represents the veil over the heart. So we cannot see the things of the spirit. And God says he will, he will let the, he will be against this. He's against the woman who, who does this. So please, if you're involved in this as a woman, you must repent from this because you are working with false prophets. If you look in 2 Timothy 3, it tells us, it tells you of these false um, teachers, and it says they are puffed up with pride because they have pride in the flesh. They have pride in works of the law. They might not look like the law at the beginning. It might only be some Hebrew roots things, and it might look like, good things and it might look spiritual but it isn't it says yeah of them these people they act religious but they will reject the power that can could make them godly that means they reject jesus christ he is the power the only power that can give us righteousness so this is saying that they have a form of godliness, but they they deny the power thereof. In other words, they deny Jesus Christ. They are Judaizers. This is describing Judaizers exactly. They are proud people, puffed up with pride. And you can read here yeah, all the, the things that God by the Holy Spirit sees in them. You might not see it. To you, they might look very religious and pious, but the Holy Spirit sees into the heart and describes them perfectly here. And then it says, they are the kind who work their way into people's home and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings but they are never, never able to understand the truth. Please do not, if you're a woman, think that's not you. This is exactly explaining what's going on in Christian churches, in women's Bible studies, and with women's groups, women that are maybe outside the churches. This is exactly what is happening. Because it's all these new Bible studies that we follow but we do not understand the truth, meaning we do not understand grace. We are, we, we are kept stuck, you see, and not progressing to maturity and to the understanding of grace. So they prey on vulnerable women. We are all very vulnerable at the moment because of all the lawlessness and the sin and the heartlessness in the world so we as women get hurt and then we are maybe hurt in our marriage and then we get drawn away by this bride teaching because all women want to be loved and want to be a beautiful bride but they are not taking you to Jesus they are taking you back to where you came from to under the law so yeah, in um, yeah, in Jeremiah seven, sorry, in Jeremiah forty four, it says, "Yeah, the woman also said, and when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make?" Cakes for her to worship her and pour out drink offerings to her without our husbands. That word permission was added there. In other words, the, the men are also into it. And yeah, in Jeremiah 7, it tells us the children also. So it's saying about serving the queen of heaven, the children gather wood, 
The fathers kindle the fire and the women knead dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven and they pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Now see this spiritually. Don't go and see something in your mind of long ago when they worshipped idols because remember the scriptures of the Old Testament are also written for our edification, but we need to understand what they mean spiritually. So when it says the woman need dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven, you need to think of Jesus Christ being the bread of heaven. He is the bread. Now these women make other kind of bread. There's another doctrine. Yeah, you see, and the women are doing that part of making this other um, teaching, not what Jesus, Jesus is spiritual food, but spiritual food for the queen of heaven. And it says the children and the fathers are also involved. So that is exactly what we learn here in Timothy, that the whole family is taken captive by this teaching. Now, when we are in Christ, we enter behind the veil. Um, I will link my other teaching about Hebrews 6, uh, entering rest. I will link that study for you because it explains this of entering behind the veil where Jesus has entered for us. But this Entering behind the veil, the symbol of that is in, uh, we can see in the marriage between a husband and a wife, where the um, wife wears a veil, and that veil is removed from her. So that this is what it's, it symbolizes. We know that when Jesus was uh, crucified, it says the um and the veil of the Holy of Holies of the temple was torn in two from the top to bottom. So we all know that, that the, it was torn. And that is why people in the West have this veil that is lifted and the white dress. It represents this, you see, because the Bible said that marriage is a symbol of Christ and the church. So when Jesus came and when Christianity came, then this was done. It says in Revelation 21, all things made new and the new Jerusalem. It says, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Now, this is Christianity. People think it's all sorts of things. It's the Holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. That's Christianity, people. The Jerusalem below is Judaism, the previous system. The Jerusalem above is Christianity. And it's also the bride, the lamb's wife. We in Christianity, we are married to Jesus. And that is why the veil is, is torn. But now through false doctrines, we are being taken back to be a bride again and to be covered up with a veil. And then it speaks of the glory of the new covenant and it speaks of the spirit, not the letter. Because Jesus told us the, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that's going to give life, life. And so he brought and made the people that wrote the New Testament ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So the new covenant is of the spirit. And but then it goes on to tell us of the glory of the new covenant. Now, for sake of time, I'm not going to read all that. You can go and read this of this, um, how the old covenant was glorious. And Judaism indeed is glorious, but Christianity is more glorious because the old covenant is, 
is called the ministry of condemnation, but it says it did have glory. But the new covenant has much more glorious. And it says that was passing away, but what remains is more glorious. You see, but now we have in our time with the Zionism and with the work of the enemy bringing us, showing us again the old covenant, which has its glory, but then deceiving us. It says here, yeah, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a face over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. And then it goes on to say, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And there, where the Spirit of law, the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed from glory to glory. So that veil must be coming off and you must be being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ and having your mind renewed to have the mind of Christ. You see, so you must have this unveiled face and you must follow the law Lord through Christianity and the teachings of Christianity but not in the Roman church that takes you to the law not that way but by by following Jesus Christ with an unveiled face now the veiled face the moment Moses is read the veil lies on the heart and it says it remains in the reading of the Old Testament. So if you are reading the Old Testament without understanding the explanations that are given in the New Testament, which is done by revelation, by being by you receiving the revelation, um, then what happens is then this veil is on your heart and you are blinded. So when you um, are turning to Jesus Christ, follow the path of Christianity and not the path of works so that you can be changed into the image and that you can be married to Jesus Christ. You are married to him, but you sort of like first you are betrothed because in the custom of of the Hebrews being betrothed was as being married so even though the marriage already happened and Christianity came come came already 2,000 years ago it's still for every individual believer when you turn to Christ you still are betrothed now being betrothed as I say is being married but it's just that the marriage isn't consummated yet so if you follow him like a virgin, wherever he goes, in due time, the understanding will come by the renewing of your mind and you will under fully understand grace and you will be a wife that is fruitful and bears much fruit. Yeah, in Romans 7, it says, Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another to him who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God so why do we bear fruit because we are the part of the lamb's wife and bring forth children of the promise you see because then we are truly the lamb's wife and we can bring forth Children for Jesus Christ, children for the kingdom. But if you 
go and you put back on that veil and dress yourself like a bride and you start to do the customs of the things that have passed, then you are going to be an adulterer because you are already in Christianity, you are married to Jesus. You are betrothed and you will be the wife. But now if you turn back, then it is adulterous. And um, so that is a big, big problem. It leads to spiritual death. You see, because the letter kills us, if we follow the law, then we become part again of a dead system. And Jesus gave us Christianity by which he raises us to spiritual life. So it says here, because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked so that he doesn't turn from his wicked way to save his life. Therefore you shall no longer envision futility nor practice divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand. So what happens to a... Christian woman, when she falls into this Hebrew roots, her heart becomes sad because she gets, she she starts these things and and she takes her whole family in it, and then she there comes lots of the um, division with her own family. So if you look here in Jeremiah forty four, which we looked at earlier, it says there. Speaking of serving other gods whom they did not know, nor your fathers. Now, if you are a Christian, did your fathers do these Hebrew roots practices? Did your fathers turn back to, to Judaism or Islam? When you grew up, you did not know this. This is recently, this trend. Yes, it's been going on for almost 100 years, but especially in the last couple of decades, it's just picking up and picking up. You're going back to gods your fathers do not know. So now those women who have felt um, comforted by this teaching of the bride and who sh who who are comforted by the scriptures, by Jesus Christ, are taken back and now they are made sad all over again and isolated from their families. And the hands of the strength, the wicked are strengthened so that he does not turn from his wicked way to save his life because you see he's taken into the letter of the law and the letter kills whereas the spirit can give life. So how is the wicked strengthened? by stealing Christian women to be part of Hebrew roots where people serve with their works rather than acknowledge they are sinners and acknowledge that our works cannot save us and then turning to Jesus Christ fully and trusting fully. We turn back to keeping law and living by the letter of the law, and we're strengthening the wicked one, the wicked one people. So if you are a, um, if you know a woman like this, please, please share this video with her if you think it can help her. She only has to watch the first part if she doesn't want to watch all of it. Even if she's angry, it will sow some seeds that can grow in time. And you need to be very patient. If someone falls in this, it's not going to help to try and show them. You can just speak the truth and then pray for them. That the Because if she loves, if she truly loves Jesus, she is going to get out of this because he has promised that he will free everybody that is taken captive. He said everyone that belongs to him, not one will fall to the ground. So in due time, he will tear off the veils 
that have been put on them and they will no longer, they will come out of this teaching, come out of her, my people. And if you are in this, please hear me. Please, there are many false teachers um, and Satan is very subtle and sly. He knows how to speak to the heart of a woman and to draw her away. And then just like Eve was deceived and Adam followed her because he didn't want to go against her. That's why they deceive us that are women first and then the whole family falls into this. Now to end off, I want to read for us from Galatians 4. And it just fits so beautifully to show us the two covenants. It says there from, in Galatians 4 from verse 21, Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abram had two, two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through the promise, which things are symbolic, for these are two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So we, brethren, are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So when Paul wrote this, this was at the time of the birth of the Christianity, they were the first fruits. You see, Jesus was the firstborn of the brethren. And Paul and Peter and, and James and John and all of them were the first fruits, the first children of this new Jerusalem, which we call today Christianity. And since Christianity um, was was born when Jesus came and brought forth Christianity. That mother of us all has brought forth many sp spiritual children. Many, many people were born again. Whereas the other system, it, it is barren. But you see, it, it does give birth to children, but those children are, are Ishmael. They are in bondage to the law, you see. But this one, Christianity, gives birth to many, many more children. It says there, um, Rejoice, O barren, you who did not bear, but you will have the desolate has many more children. So this Christianity brings forth many, many born-again children, you see. So it is a better system. Why would you want to go back to the bondage, it says there? Because we are not of that mother. We are not of that queen of heaven. We are of the Jerusalem, which is above, which is Christianity. We have such a beautiful system of Christianity, but it is under such attack to steal our people and put them back under bondage and put veils on their face and let them be a woman like Leah who couldn't see properly. She had bad eyes, which means 
spiritually blind. But the true wife of Jacob was Rachel, who was beautiful, and she um, she is the chosen wife. She represents that. So it is a very deceptive teaching, this one of the bride, and I pray that soon it will be revealed for what it is.